to By the Burial Ground, hosted by paranormal investigators Tyler Carter and Chris Stanley. Alright guys, and welcome to By the Burial Ground. I am Tyler. I am Chris. And here we are with another episode. This one is going to cover um, a place we actually went to locally. It's the uh, Everett Covered Bridge. It's a little south of Cleveland near the Akron area. And we went there last Saturday. um, And we had to leave. We had to get out of there a little bit earlier than we wanted to. So we're going back tonight. And we're going to be having uh, a pretty good investigation. I'm excited. Yes, we are. It was going good. But like I said, we had to leave. That's okay because we can always go back. And we had no problems at night. It's a hop, skip, and a jump away, and we didn't have anybody messing with us there. Um, If you check our page, the Brunswick Area Paranormal Society, um, we had a live stream going while we were out there, and it was really fun. Um, There was a couple of people when we first got there, and a little bit of traffic, so we're going to go later tonight. But one of the things I couldn't provide because I completely forgot we were going out there before we went and I was just not equipped with the information I needed to to provide for anybody who was watching the live stream. I was asking Chris a couple questions and he answered some stuff, but I wanted to give background to what was going on right now and background to the Everett Road Bridge because it has a pretty checkered past and there's a reason why it may be so susceptible to this paranormal activity. So. I'm going to read through a little article I found online. Um, It was written by Dominique King, and you can find it on ohio.org in the blog section. Um, I I just want to read through a small section just because it gives good background to the the, the history and the lore behind it. Chris has a little bit out of his encyclopedia, Encyclopedia of Haunted Places, and it was written by Jeff Bellinger. And he's going to add a little bit afterwards, but I'm going to read this real quick and just kind of give you guys the background. So, the Everett Road Bridge is the last remaining covered bridge in Summit, Ohio, or Summit County, south of Cleveland near Akron. And it's over, it's, a, it's in a national park, so it's part of the Bridal Trail, and there's a lot of horseback riding and things like that to go through it. Um, in 1877... Farmer John Gilson and his wife went to visit friends one cold winter night. A storm arose as the couple returned home. The couple needed to ford Furnace Road with their horse-drawn wagon or sled, but rising water and ice blocked their usual course. Mr. Gilson began leading his horses across the creek at another crossing, but he and the horses lost their footing. Mrs. Gilson survived the incident, even though she fell into the water, but Mr. Gilson did not. Some say the construction of the Everett Road Covered Bridge was a response to the Gilson tragedy. Another researcher says the span, original name Centennial Bridge, indicated a possible construction date tied to the United States Centennial 
1876. Now, the bridge truss style and the fact the wooden bridge began to fall out favored by the 1880s suggests that the bridge may date to the 1870s, but there is no record confirming the bridge's construction date. The mystery deepens when you consider the construction of Everett Road itself in 1856, road construction work to found a burial mound with a tomb containing the remains and belongings of Native Americans who were part of the Hopewell culture, Hopewell culture, sorry, Native groups living in Ohio 1,500 to 2,100 years ago. Mid-19th century's folks didn't appreciate the historical and cultural significance of the discovery and simply built their road over part of the burial ground. So the road itself is actually built through Native American burial grounds, you know, and that's always tied to different situations, especially when you're talking about, like, poltergeists and things like that. Yeah, because the Native Americans are very spiritual and you desecrate their land, they usually put a curse on it. I don't think it's more or less a curse. I think they're just upset or confused. Because they are the Native Americans. They they yes. were here before any Europeans came through and, and desecrated their land. Um, continuing on with the story, though, ghosts on the other hand reportedly have a different view on things, and a ghostly hitchhiker reportedly frequents the road in the area between the Native burial site and the wooded bridge. Chris and I drove down there. We didn't see anything along the way, but we had some experiences that we're going to talk about here soon while we were there. Um, floodwaters, again, played a role in the bridge's history, damaging the bridge, he bridge heavily in 1913 and destroying it completely in 1975. School kids raised money to rebuild the bridge, but it took men more than a decade for the project to come through it to fruition. A crew of local citizens recruited by the National Park Service rebuilt the bridge by hand in 1986 using mostly new timber instead of the rotted remains of the old bridge. Ghosts reported continue to haunt the rebuilt span with ghosts, hunters continuing to conduct investigations in the area and detecting nocturnal ghostly orbs, fogs, and disembodied voices in the sites. Um, and, and that's just kind of the, the part of that article I wanted to go on. Now, Chris, you had a couple of points you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I just want to go over, well, you already went over the history, so I'm not going to read that. But I'm going to, in, in this part, just a little part of going to, you said, you said a hitchhiker. I'm just going to read from a book explaining what other people saw that this person has written down and investigated. Okay, I'm going to read from that book right now. Cool, cool. Uh, today, some witnesses report seeing a faceless man in gray coveralls with an all straw hat standing by the bridge. The sound of hoofs has been heard, though no animals are anywhere near the bridge. And others have spotted lanterns by the bridge at night, only to find the lights gone when they approach. Now, something to that real quick. Just because we're, we're also trying to to disprove certain things if we can while we're out there um there is a road that passes by there yes and we saw a lot of like headlights and stuff that could be something there um we'll be looking for that lantern again tonight we didn't see anything but just just to provide something there there was a lot of cars passing by in the background while we were first there that's why we're going later and that could be perceived as lanterns but go ahead i'm sorry uh, speaking of a cemetery, they also said there is also reports of a cemetery being on the right-hand side of the bridge that has dozen or so graves without headstones. I don't know if that if there is another graveyard or they just didn't want to mention that it's actually the Indian burial ground because that only twelve that makes seem like there was a. Well, yeah, but like apparently the the Native American burial ground was actually right underneath the part. The road itself is built over part of that. is, is built over well, that burial the, ground. The old part of the road's on the other side, but where cars can't go. Yeah. So it could be that right hand side, or the north or south entrance. I don't know if it's called east or west, but <laughs> we'll explore a little bit farther out tonight. Um, you know, this episode will be out after we've done our investigations, but double back and check out the page. Again, I said it in the beginning, but I'll just repeat it one more time. It's Brunswick Area Paranormal Society. You can, we're linked up through the By the Burial Ground Facebook page and check us out on there. And we're up on, Inst um, I'm sorry, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play. You know, we're, we're, we're on the major network, so go check us out. 
plus you can go directly to our Buzzsprout page and you know we're, we're going to be going through there as well that's kind of our hosting site shouts out to Buzzsprout you know you guys can toss us a little sponsorship give us a little discount on our uh, hosting <laughs> but <laughs> we uh go check us out give us those five star reviews you know we're, we're trying out trying to go out here and expose what we can expose and learn as much as we can about the paranormal situations that we can come across we're doing a lot of Ohio stuff right now but we've talked about it and we want to go further out um yeah and you know we got the encyclopedia of haunted places we want to go to so many different places and this one has locales from around the world so and it has perspectives from different paranormal paranormal hunters and you know maybe we'll get that later to the a episode lot of, a lot of hot spots exactly exactly a lot of locations that i think are really going to be interesting for you know you guys the listeners and there's always going to be pictures and videos we're going live again tonight you know like i said this will be out later but we're, we're excited for that and that video is always going to be there so i don't edit that video i i go live i get the best shots i can get and i put it out there for everybody i'm not out there trying to to doctor it up i don't need to change any perspective there we're trying to get as much raw feed chris has got his camera i'm gonna have a first person camera on me as well so we'll get some footage from that getting back to i put my videos and photos straight on i don't even have editing software so what you see is raw footage of where we go all these locations they're on that uh our page have been raw and unedited and we label it properly you can go in there you can see the stuff um chris has got stuff up from the molly stark and the various locations he's gone that i wasn't a part of but the more we investigate together now that we're a team we'll find more things for you guys and we'll always have it up there um we're not afraid to go to places and we're not we're not trying to cause trouble or anything but you know we we do uh, we operate outside the law a little bit sometimes sometimes but you know we try to be respectful we're not like i said being you know desecrating or, or anything like that um talking about our last vacate or our last vacation our last investigation because yeah it was, was kind of a vacation because i was on vacation you were on vacation during it exactly um last investigation we had a lot of fun and we first got there there were a couple of gentlemen who i think for like the first five minutes may have been there but they pulled off pretty quick and we were by ourselves for the rest of the night because there's a, a house no one lives in further down that side of the road that i saw that's boarded up i guess teenagers like to do that stuff this house has no interest i have not felt anything from this house so i don't even go to that house our main focus is the bridge itself when we go out there um i went live and on the live video itself you can see plenty of orbs and i know everybody's like oh well those are probably just bugs when we shoot and you see it in chris's pictures you see it in the videos you you see the bugs the bugs are pretty distinct yes they are and they cast shadows um but the orbs and you'll see them multiple times throughout the videos and then some of the pictures chris posted they are getting hit with the same light at the same directions and they don't cast any shadows behind them because (laughs) obviously they're spirits so they don't need to cast shadows there is also a mysterious fog in one of my photos i look back on again today actually that was there was going to be start of some activity, but I guess we were a little early. I guess they don't come out till later. They're, you know, they like the midnight hour, I guess. I don't know. Well, and we'll get closer to the twilight hour tonight. Like I said, we're leaving here at 10 o'clock. We'll probably get there after 1030, a little after 1030, because it's about like a 25-minute, 30-minute drive, you know? Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, exactly. For all those ones that are in a different time. Well, like I said, no, nobody listening to this is going to be able to pick it up live, because, you know, this isn't going to go up till later. Oh, yeah. But um, we'll we'll be out there. Check back to the video, and we're gonna try to get closer to that midnight hour tonight. We're gonna be out there longer than the last videos as well. Yes. Um, we got a lot of equipment on us. I'm still working on my backpack. There's a couple of pieces that I need to get for the uh, the multi setup on the uh, surveillance system. But I, I am gonna have that eventually. So we'll have the night vision out there, and we'll have a lot better of equipment. But I'm still working on that right now. Right, yeah, I get it. I know. I'm going to work on that. My videos and my spirit box sections 
we'll yeah, we're going to have another live session tonight. Yes. And then when everybody checks back after they check out the podcast, you'll see the spirit box session we have. You know, We had one on the last one. Um, we didn't really get too much out of I, it. I got that one thing. It said, hey, and that was the first one. Okay, so we got a hey. I, hey, because if you know a spirit box work, you know, they scan radio stations really fast. If you get a solid word out of multiple scans, then you got yourself a spirit trying to communicate with you. And it'll be a singular word or a phrase, and it's outside of what would be just something drawn from an actual like radio broadcast. You know, you can tell, you can hear the radio broadcast as it goes through, but it's that white noise area that's trying to pick up communications through there. Exactly. So we'll have that back out again tonight, and you know, I'm really excited for that because. We've done the investigation at the graveyard by the burial ground, yes. and uh, we did that investigation there, and we had that uh, Jacob or Jason, you know, and, and that was so clear and so crisp. We've got it up on the, the Brunswick Area Paranormal Society page, and it, it was so nice to, like, have such clear evidence, and we're going to go explore there again. I mean, obviously, it's right next to us, but we, uh, we have some bigger fish to fry right now. And and also on my one of my, the, my only video that I posted, on top of his live, there was some unusual noises that can't be explained, and I'm always aware of where my partners are when they're investigating. They can be sitting down, so I always debunk if he was moving up. But one time I just heard a random like something thrown at us, but you were sitting still. I was sitting still. It sounded like. It could have been one of those horse hoof prints that I mentioned in there, but it was just a small one. And we'll try to get some clearer stuff tonight. And I'm really excited to go back because revisiting, I mean, it just, I feel like it just, I mean. It, Maybe they I, weren't it, comfortable with us being there. And it literally doubles our chances to see something again. So we'll be there later. It's going to be another kind of probably gloomy night. I mean, it was raining when we went out. It was raining last time. And it's probably going to be raining tonight at some point, I imagine, because it looks like the weather's going to go south at some point. So. As usual, in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, we're dealing with the rains right now, but hey, some, some states wish they had that, you know? Yes. But back to the investigation, um, you had some pictures up with some orbs, and they were pretty distinct. Um, I would like to think by this point, both of us looking at so much paranormal stuff, we can spot the difference between a bug and an orb. And you have pictures of bugs with how they look and of the orbs just to kind of compare the differences as well. That's why I put it up there, just like I caught a moth. Literally, probably was flying. I didn't even think about it. His picture's there, like you said, casting the shadow. Then you take a couple of pictures. You can tell between the dust and some people in, in the rain. You can tell the difference. Uh, and some of them were actual orbs. Some won't. Something was there. And I got I to gotta mark it on the video. I think it's around like, around like the 21 minute mark in the live video. Yes. But there's a, um, a really distinct orb and it starts from pretty far away. And it stays the same brightness as it gets closer to the light. If it was a bug, you would actually see it start to illuminate more as you it got closer it to the light. Do you think it was a faint lantern? No, maybe? no. This one was an orb for sure, but it was okay. a really strong one. And it came at me at a very like zigzag pattern. Flew up right near by the camera and then like kind of shot off. Um, I'll I'll try to go into the video and in the comment section I'll try to like put the exact time stamp on it that it was located. But that was really substantial for me because that it was it was an orb. I mean I'm not even gonna have anybody be able to tell me different on that one. It was an orb and it had a very strong pattern of flight and that was cool to see because we had been out there for about an hour all together and it was starting to pick up a little bit and we really saw some stuff as we were leaving too i know you were taking those last couple pictures and it seemed like the camera was malfunctioning like something was trying to get it you know try to uh, speak to us or get our attention again and i had my first person camera on me but unfortunately i didn't have the proper mount so i'm gonna have the chest mount this time which will give a much better, clearer perspective, right. and that'll add more more things for us to look over and try to find any kind of evidence and in that. Of course, I'll have my head mount, so wherever I see something or it'll follow where my I'm looking, 
So that way you know, oh, he's looking that direction. Yeah. You're getting the multiple perspectives, and we're going live too, so you're going to see everything as we're doing it. And it's it's going to be amazing. I know the page followers really uh, came out and showed good, uh, good support last time. Yes, they did. And shouts out to all of our fans on the page because you guys – really helped inspire us to, to do this podcast as well as to keep going with the investigating. Exactly. That was our my first best on that page. Second was actually good old Molly Stark. <laughs> Molly Stark, I wish I would have been there. I, it's it's different animal. It's a whole different feeling and EVPs and noises. I know that me and the other investigators investigator erica we went inside yeah i know trespassing but we don't desecrate we just want to learn more because we know there are spirits about and we're always looking to try to interact positively with the spirits you know i i, I hate investigators who think they need to go in and like knock be, stuff over be a bully or exactly like no that. no that's not how you do it you know there's there's nothing about that that's that's good for the spirits that's good for the land that's good for investigators because the more people desecrate that you know destroy graffiti anything like that on these these paranormal locations they it, hate that <laughs> it takes away from what we can do because then they have to pr put, put more security on these i mean if you want to throw up tags throw up tags go to your inner city and throw them up you know put them on the side of a key bank or something but try to stay away from the haunted locations or the historic locations because, you know, the investigators, we need to go out there and we need to, to, to explore these places without getting fucked with by the cops and stuff. And when you do stuff like that out there, it really, really holds us up from being able to do what we need to do. Exactly. There was just, just I like that Lyma, Lyma Tuberculosis Hospital. Of course, that's more, more demo, you know, decaying, as I say. Yeah. And there was, like, too much graffiti where it just, like, oh, really? And, I mean, like I said, graffiti has its place, you know, whatever. But just try, try to think about the locations you're doing it. And, I mean, do a little bit of research, you know. You throw it up down in, in your downtown cities, whatever, that's fine. You're not going to really hit anything historic for the most no, part. For the most part. But when you're going out to locations like that, you know, think, of, think about what you're doing out there. I'm not going to preach, but... We're trying to investigate those locations with that, as minimal resistance as possible from authority sometimes figures. Sometimes we don't want to see that. And sometimes, yeah, we get a giggle out of it to lighten the mood if it's been very tense. But still, I just, I don't like it. So, going into the last investigation and in our, our experiences there, um, when we first got there, and I made comment to it. And there was a couple people who were there, and, and maybe they made the sound. Yes. But we heard a howl as soon as we got yes. there and we're just getting out of the car. Now, it is a park. It could have been just like an animal or something. Or like I said, there was like two or three guys. And two or three guys. Who were there in like the first three or four minutes. But they, you can hear them drive away at certain points. Yes. So it could have been there. It could have been an animal. This is why you, had, you know, when you go to these locations, you debunk. And w know your where your location is, and just if it's unexplainable, there you go. You got yourself a paranormal experience. And we're always trying to find anything possible to prove something other than the paranormal, just because we don't want to provide silly evidence. You know, we don't want to have you guys looking at our stuff and being like, "Well, like that's just a light from a car shining through a tree," or that's like obviously just a person standing back there, or that sound was just like. Your guys is no, we're we're not trying no. to provide silly silly evidence. We want to be as straightforward as possible and 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 really do the research to make sure that what we're providing is is, is correct, at least what we think is correct. I mean, right. nothing's a hundred percent. No, nothing's a hundred percent, and that's why when I post these videos on my page, I want you to go through it. I want you to listen with headphones, like oh. And if I didn't catch it, I don't catch everything. It took me a couple times. I've watched the one video of us out there live like six times, just listening. I watched and, once. <laughs> yeah, and, and trying to see if I could see anything new, you know? I mean, that's why I know that one was a definite orb in comparison to some of the bugs that I had caught yes. on camera. 
Um, and I even mentioned while we were out there streaming bugs, like right in the first like five to ten oh, minutes. Yeah. I, I knew there were bugs out there. Or rain. It's and rain. the rain was out there too. But we were inside the covered bridge and I was able to differentiate between the bug flying towards me and the spirit or the orb flying towards me. And it wasn't even raining that hard, so no, nothing can get on my camera when I was taking that first picture, which, I mean, literally, yeah, some of it might be rain, but a couple of them in there were pretty obviously orbs just waiting to get explored. Exactly, and it was really... Uh, it was pretty active for a while. If you look at my, uh, look at the, you know, the videos we shot, and you'll see. I mean, you know, it, it's there's a lot going on. We uh, we're talking, and we have the um, the spirit box session while we're there. And sometimes I'm pretty quiet because I just want to. We try to stay quiet at certain points. If you ever go onto our live streams and interact with us, I try to answer any questions, and I'm more informed going back to the bridge than I was last time because last time I was a little ignorant. Um, you know, if you're on those live streams on any event we're going to, and we'll always try to research, you know, I, I, I will definitely not make the mistake of not, you know, of, of being not researched before I go out again. But ask us questions while you're on the live stream, and I'll interact with you. We'll be quiet a lot just because we're listening. You know, we're not trying to sit there and just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Mm -hmm. But we want you guys to be able to hear stuff too. So if you go on there... You don't want to hear me just bullshitting the whole time. That's what you come here for. That's what you come to the podcast for. You want to hear any kind of evidence you can catch yourself. So if we miss something, you're like, boom, hey, I just caught there that. There you go. <laughs> and always shout it out. You know, check our videos. Check, check our, our, our facts. You know, check everything. And if you see something, let us know. I mean, I'll help. I'll put up our raw videos, the unedited stuff, the uh, – not edited, but the the, like – really really like the one shoulder cam i had on it half the time you couldn't even see anything it was just dark i'll put up stuff like that the the, the stuff i kind of just discard your video the stuff i've looked through and i'm like all right well that's just if you guys want to you know explore it yourself if you want to look at those files just just let us know interact with us you know we have by the burial ground at gmail.com we've got the facebook up we have we're on itunes all that stuff so interact with us in any way you can. Come look at us. Like us on Facebook because I know Facebook's done some weird shit, but it's the best way for us to keep contacted with you guys. Exactly. Am I always going to other paranormal pages, liking them and say, hey, I got this page too. Just, you know, spreading our page around the world. To... Spreading the love. We want exactly. to interact with all the other par paranormal pages, not just in Ohio, but around the world. Hell, if other paranormal pages you know, squads wanted to invite us out for a dual investigation and then sit down and do a podcast with I us. I would love that. We would love that, and we would love to get many perspectives. If you want to be a guest on our podcast and you're in the area, talk to us because we want to hear as much as possible. We want to hear other people's experiences as well, not just our experiences because we have a lot of them. And I'll ramble on for hours. <laughs> yes, so will I. And so just... Just think about these things as you're listening to us because we want you guys, the fans, to be a part of this. And as much investigating as we do, we love company. We'll, we want a team. You know, Chris and I, we have some other investigators we work with. Um, sometimes they're not as reliable as we want them to no. be. But now that him and I are working together, you know, if you want to join our team, talk to us. You know, we need to feel you out because we're not just going to go out with a bunch of weirdos, we're even gonna, though we, we are can, weirdos. Yeah. We'll probably come up with some questions and stuff like that, investigate, get to know you, and see if you, you know, your experience, your experiences. But we're looking to build a community of paranormal investigators to be a part of everything, to be a part of, you know, alien researching, to look for our cryptids, our Bigfoots, you know, our chupacabras, or things like that, and to go into the ghost realms and look at those things. I mean, skinwalkers, all, all that kind Phoenix of Phoenix lights. I yeah. mean, there's just so much out there that's unexplained and just interesting. And there's too much world out there for everybody to just dismiss any chance of anything going on. Exactly. Chris, I know you've moved around a lot of areas and you've been to different, you know, parts of the globe and you lived in was Iceland for a yes. while. Now, Iceland has some weird culture heritage, and 
They've got some some folklore that's through the roof, and I want to get into that a okay. little bit in our next episode. I think we're going to be talking about our cryptids, our, our Bigfoots, uh, our Chupacabas. Over the, over the pond experiences. Yeah. And, and also any kind of, I mean, like, you know, the Jersey Devil, the the, the, the skunk ape out of, like, it's moved through Ohio, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania areas like that. All that different stuff we're going to get into in the next episode. Um, we're going to take a quick break real quick, as we always do our mid, mid-episode mid break. And coming back, we're going to talk about what we want out of this upcoming investigation into the covered bridge. And just hoping to look out for certain things. So exactly, we'll be right back. And we're back. So... Just a little discussing while we were out there, um, and just tossing it out there again. If you want to team up, any paranormal groups out there, if you want to sit down on the podcast with us, if you want to go out on an investigation with us, if you want to invite us out to your investigation, hit us up. You know, we might not always be able to come. We've got life, we've got to live, but we always love the invitation, and we'll go out and give multiple perspectives and add more to the crew, and. Yeah, so we, we're humble beginnings. We don't get all the fancy equipment, but we try. And we're going to build our equipment as we go on further. Um, going to have the night vision, the surveillance, surveillance set up, and that'll be built into the backpack as well as like a portable station that I can kind of set up with and everything. Um, we're going to be getting more equipment as we go along, so just keep tight with us. Enjoy what we can bring you for now, and... Going into tonight, Chris, what what are you really looking for out of the investigation tonight? What else would anybody want to look for? An apparition. I mean, the Holy Grail, you know? The Holy Grail. Everyone's always going up. And more conversation with spirits. That'll be cool. I mean, I'm really looking to, to possibly see this lantern, you know, because I know where the road's at. I know where any lights are going to come from, headlight-wise. So... The Look one at, that looks like Silent Hill. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that I mean, that's just that one light that we parked underneath that looks kind of crazy. Um, but no, like I, I'm gonna be looking for a lantern. I'm gonna be listening for those, you know, hoof hoof prints or those, those hoof steps. You know, I, I I want to hear that rumble. If I could hear, you know, maybe Mr. Gilson or whatever, you know, out there, I I, I want to hear that. Now we know his name. Yeah. And we can we'll, call him by his first name. I know back then they you. You were more formal by calling him Mr. Gilson. Yeah, we don't want to disrespect the guy, but, you know, we want to maybe engage him specifically while we're out there. And and now that, you know, we've done our... Well, he, Chris, you had the research, but unfortunately, we went out there. I, I wasn't as prepared, you know. No, I um, wasn't. Yeah, I know someone died, but I, didn't, I couldn't remember the name. So we know the situation... We, we know possibly with the Native American burial grounds, and, and that's always a tragedy, tragedy because, you know, what happened was was not, uh, uh, it was it was terrible. I mean, there's, there's nothing more that could be said there. Um, we're going to be going out there and seeing what arises. Going out there later will be nice because getting closer to that twilight hour, you know? Can anybody check if it's a full moon tonight? Probably not because it's cloudy. Yeah, well... We can look that. We can look on our. We can Google that. You know, right. um, we'll we'll check that out and, and see. You know, because that's always gonna. Everybody knows how those full moon full moons go. Yes, Things get do. a little bit sketchy at those points. Yes, they do. So I'm I'm really excited excited because I want to spend more time out there tonight. Sit down with the spirit box again. And we, we know what we're looking for. We can um, sit outside since it's not raining a little bit, outside the bridge. Yeah, and we're going to walk through a couple of the trails around there as well, walk further out. Um, we were trying to really focus on the bridge at first, but now we're going to actually go see what's going on with everything else going around. Some of the other trails, walk down through. Find the hot spot, see where that burial ground was. There's a lot between your research... On the, the internet and the book, one says 12 bodies are found, but they didn't specify what kind of cemeteries. I know it was unmarked, and yours, you said, was a like a burial mound. With, and the, they just, des- they knocked it, they just bulldozed over it and built the road right over it. 
confused and wonder why that bridge has a past where it kept getting destroyed. Maybe it has something to do with it. And it might have something to do with John dying as well. Yes. And we're gonna we're gonna go out there and see tonight. Um what what are some other places upcoming that are you you're really trying to get out to, you know? Well, some places they kick you out at dark. Yeah. So I've been trying to think of places they won't kick you out after dark. Well, you know, and have you ever been to the Franklin Castle up up in the Cleveland area? No, I haven't. You can go out there at dark, and I've gone out there with my friends Rachel and Jesse before. That would be cool. And we've done a nighttime investigation out there, and we had some orbs, and we had a... A kind of like talking session with the microphone she put up a boom mic and we had to try to see if we we're picking up some evps or not and we had some pretty good activity going on so most of our night times like like our podcast here beside the bed ba- by the you know by the burial ground the exactly burial ground, we have we have a lot of different cemeteries well i haven't taken out that one that we keep getting uh, it's out further where we used to live. Yeah. That one is interesting because we'll go on that, of talking about nighttime investigations. There's been some weird stuff. There's some weird taps on our vehicle because you park right there where the road is on the older side of that cemetery. It's just a lot of weird vibes going on there. And I'm going to talk to my mom soon. <laughs> I know people are like, oh, you talk to your mom. But I'm going to talk to my mom soon because... Her and a lot of her friends went to a certain crybaby bridge down in the Wayne Holmes County area where I'm from here in Ohio, and they had so much activity as teenagers there. I want to talk to her about that one, and I want us to go out there because I know from reports from multiple different generations that that bridge has activity, and we're going to go out there. There's a couple of things that people reportedly do. You know, I know people have talked about it before, but like baby powder on bumpers and, you know, you get fingerprints and stuff. We're going to do some of these different things and try to either just debunk what, what people may see or just try to find an explanation or see if we experience some of these same phenomena. Everyone has their crybaby bitch, but there's always a couple out there that really spook people out and you want to go investigate or the Moonville Tunnel. That's on my to-do list, too, but that's a ways down south, Ohio, but that's like a weekend excursion. Yeah, I mean, we got our nine-to-fives, we work, but, you know, we got some weekends coming up where we can go do these kind of things, and, hey, we always toss it out there, you know, if you want us to come out, maybe toss an investigation into your house, we'll do that. We're not, we're not going to be out there unless you guys want to be there, and we'd love for you guys to walk through the house with us and really get to know maybe the spirits or interact or or help us you know expel whatever's going on in your house if it turns out to be something evil or demonic you think ever that we're going to investigate our own house and kick everyone out (laughs) yeah oh we want to do a, a session in our own house because we are right here next to the graveyard and as much as we've done you know investigations in that graveyard the house itself, we have some experiences here sometimes. I know, Chris, we've talked about it before, that experience you had about seeing the figure that you thought was me. Yep, because you're a tall figure. <laughs> and we'll, we'll do an investigation in our own house just to try to see. I mean, it, it gets kind of spooky here sometimes. So it, it does. I guess some noises I can explain, some I can't. And everybody knows about that, about like 3 a.m., you know, that's supposed to be like the, the hour of all the, the creepy stuff going on. I mean, there's times here in the house where that's exactly when I wake up, you know? Not specifically for any reason, but, like, maybe I get up and I want to get some water or something, you know? Or, or go to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Something something, something must be... wakes you up. Exactly. Interacting with us to, to get us up at that hour. Maybe that's why I had the fans on, so I don't want to hear... Because I'm cranky if I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> well, we have, you know, Abby and I have the fans on ourselves, And, uh, you know, we, we definitely don't well, we still want to be disturbed. Up. You wake up. I yeah. still wake up for no reason. Not by noise, just by, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, that's just here in our own house. And if you got something going on in yours, talk to us. Let us know what's going on. And we'll talk about it in the story. 
If you want to send us an audio clip talking about, you know, your experiences, we'll throw it into the podcast. I can edit that in. Yes. If you want to come talk to us at some point, we'll Skype you in. We'll talk to you. You know, I'll, I'll get the audio worked out and have you in, in the podcast with us the whole time. Or take you to Molly Stark, talk about what you experienced because you've never been out there. It's a glorious old tuberculosis hospital it's glorious we will be out at molly stark together i would say in the next month or so no matter what yes for sure that's that's a guarantee i i definitely don't want to miss an opportunity to go out there if we get kicked out early we you know we get kicked out early but i really want to see what's going on out there summer hours are longer and evening hours would be better because i've they will there's park rangers out there it's a park stark county park system and they really patrol the area. Maybe we cause them to heighten their security since we got the videos. Since there's not too many videos of people going inside the glorious old tuberculosis hospital. I mean, check those videos out on the page. They're wonderful. You know, look under Molly Stark section. We have all the different, you know, galleries labeled and whatnot. And if you have any questions, any kind of explanations, you know, you, know, you want message us we're very responsive it even says it on the space you know page that we'll respond responsive. within an hour yes. you know we, we like to talk to people we're we're doing a lot of this just to interact with more people and to, to build our presence but as well as to to draw people to us so we can all explore together exactly love exploring with a good group of people that understand and love the same stuff that we do and chris and i will go do it by ourselves if we need to but we want more people to be a part of that. We don't go by just one person. We always take two or more. That's my rule. Well, and you need to have those other people with you because, unfortunately, when you get into these situations, you know, you're, you're dealing with places that are, are maybe more Sketchy. abandoned. or Sketchy like ha- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's going to draw attention yes. that, you know what, you got to look out for each other. You know, if you're out there exploring... And, you know, you're a young explorer and you want to see what's going on in these places. Or you just want to experience. Or Be you careful. Want to learn. Be careful because, you know, these places, you're not the only person who's going out there. Nope. And sometimes the people going out there might not be going out there for the same reasons as you. So don't allow yourself to get caught up in, in a situation where, you know, you get yourself hurt. We try to stay in groups, work in groups. And that's why, you know, the more the merrier because the more people that are going out... You know, the more information you're bringing in, the more footage you're capturing, and just the more perspectives. Because sometimes the mind can play tricks on you, but your mind's not going to trick four other minds. <laughs> no. And put on that point like you're talking about, and if you want to learn, I always, myself sometimes, I go out and learn the area and just look around, see the surroundings, learn your surroundings during the day. Sometimes stuff does happen during the day, but not all the times. And if you're going to do night location, it comes in handy because you know where to walk or where not to walk. We don't want anyone getting hurt while they're investigating. And we know that, you know, when you listen to this, it's probably going to, like, light that fire inside to go out there and, and look for something. But always think about, you know, your locations, the people you're with, the people, you know, the areas you're going into because, you know what, if you're going into an area where there's maybe, like, heavy drug addictions or, or, or you know, heavy yeah, crime in certain city, areas, yeah, yeah, you could really get caught up in a situation yeah, where don't. you don't want to be in. No. And we try to stick to locations where it's more hunter-friendly, Yes, but... We go outside of that a little bit sometimes. Sometimes. And a couple of these locations that, you know, you've been to, and when I was hunting before, I went to some really sketchy areas. Not going to say some of them because some of them can actually get me in some trouble. Yeah. But I've been in some areas where it probably wasn't the best area to be at at night. And mm-hmm. I've, I've interacted with some people that were probably not the most reputable of characters. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can't. You know, come to these places at night. That's understandable, but like I said, most abandoned places are boarded up. If you do get inside, trust me, it feels like the pitch dark of night. And 
spirits think it's night too so they go hey let's raise some cane <laughs> <laughs> and you know always equip yourself you know if you gotta have some protection on you i'm not saying walk around some ak's or something but you no. know we, uh, they're already I, dead you can't kill them anymore yeah, I keep a knife on myself, you know, it's it's also been blessed as well. We have many relics on ourselves, um, you know, Chris is religious, he, he's a, a Christian, so he, he has Christian symbols on himself. On the Celtic cross. Exactly. And I, I have different various things on myself to help protect, um, you know, protect yourself, not only in the physical sense against other people or animals or something like that, but if you have to worry about the spirits or... or if you, hopefully you know you don't come across but if you have to worry about a demon you know right be mindful and think about the way you protect yourself you know carry yourself you know say if you're religious in, in any religion whatsoever say a prayer for yourself say a chant you know a mantra if you're not religious maybe just try to have some kind of like protection spell built up for yourself you know magic isn't something that's written in stone you know, there, there's a magic in oneself, and as long as you project that protection for yourself, you should be all right, you know? Or bring a mini Bible if you're religious. Put it in your pocket. Yeah. They don't like that sometimes if it's a demon. Yeah, and Chris and I, you know, we uh, we operate under the four-pillar four, four pillar system of protection usually, you know, knowing that we're, we're encased in a... Uh, kind of a, a box of light you know and and that's just a, a surrounding protection spell that we know of from different pagan and different christian books yes. and stuff so um some people use pillars some people use angels some people use even superheroes just a symbol of power to surround yourself in because you have to make sure you're protecting your soul as well as your physical body exactly always protect yourself and protect and protect others look out for each other i mean work as a team don't work separate it doesn't work that way chris and i stick together yes i mean if we're gonna split up a little bit we're gonna be within enough range to where we can visually see some kind of light or some representation of another person because we don't there's no reason we need to i mean if we're in a house it's a different story yes. we're in a earshot of each other that's a different story but we don't need to be so far away from each other to, to experience more we can move into those places and, and explore those other areas together i mean if you have to run off and you have to like check something out real quick that's right, okay go. but usually investigate. <laughs> if you're investigating something like that that quickly you're usually going to call your teammate with you to yes. go investigate that with you oh you're going to get all excited and they're going to come running it's like oh, what you see see if they caught it see if it got caught on video caught on like voice phenomena or the spirit box and I mean, that's why we have so many cameras when we go out. Yes. Tonight, I'm going to have a camera on me. You're going to have a camera on you. You're going to be shooting as well with another camera, Yep. and I'm going to be going live. Yes. So that's four different feeds going tonight. Some of it will be uploaded later, yes. but you'll have the live raw footage as well going up. It'll be up there immediately. Um, you know, you guys won't see that live tonight, obviously, just hearing this, but go back and check it out on the page. Brunswick and Area Paranormal Society. I know we'll we, we harp on it. It'll be live to you when you first see it. Yeah, so exactly. Think, think of it as being there or with us. And it'll already be recorded, so you can go through, you can comb over, you can go back over certain parts, and if you see something, you know, let us know. Um, closing out for the night, Chris, because I know we're about to go get ready to explore. Yes. What What are you really looking for? I know we, we mentioned earlier, you know, like with tonight, but... If you could really get that, like, prime time, outside of just, like, a full-bodied apparition of that, like, hitchhiker or something. Or that straw hat guy, which is probably John. Yeah. I mean, it if, it's, if John, it's the time if, period. If it's that time period. Um, What are you really looking for with our investigation tonight to show and to talk about with, with our fans? I just want to spread the truth. There's something out there. If I experience, I want to share my experience. I'm not going to keep it to myself because it done no one no good keeping anyone, anything to themselves, really, that they seen. Or it's like, oh, imagine just hush hush. Like sometimes the government tells you to hush hush. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we're not about that. We're not going to let anybody silence us. All right. So that's all we've got for you this episode. This 
going into next episode, we'll be talking into the cryptids and, and the Bigfoot, and Chupacabra, Big, yes, Jersey all Devil, all the legendary things. Um, we'll be talking some folklore from Iceland, from some of the areas that Chris has been around, from different places all around the globe. So join us you know, next episode, and hopefully you guys are giving us those likes and commenting on us and sharing your opinion. I'm Tyler. I'm Chris. You guys have a good night. <laughs>